Yep, that's right. Five misconceptions in the horse industry that's going to screw you as a rider and a trainer. Hey guys, Nolan here. Today, we got something real special. So in a previous video, we spoke about the misconception of go forward in the horse industry. If you haven't seen that video yet, the link is right up there, and I'll link it down below in the description for you mobile users. In that video, we spoke about how every single coach in the horse industry likes to scream at the top of their lungs about how you and your horse need to go more forward. Sadly, in that video, we also realized that holding onto that mentality hinders us as both riders and trainers. So today we're going to take it a step further we're going to go over a few other examples that follow the same mindset. The first one we're going to go over is suppleness. It doesn't matter what discipline you do, whether you ride dressage, hunter, jumper, eventing. Hell, even hack horses can and will benefit from suppleness. It keeps the body rideable, comfortable, and also can keep both horse and rider sound. But the misconception to suppleness comes from this. A little flexion here, a little flexion there. What, your coach said you need suppleness in the jaw? While that's not wrong, so many riders don't realize that a horse's suppleness comes more from the hind legs than the mouth itself. Remember, what you feel in the front end is a mere reflection of what's going on back there. You can have a horse supple as anything in the mouth, or at least you believe you do, but if the sides of him aren't soft and happy, that half pass is going to be shit. That jump could be a lot better. Was there any bend in that corner? And that's not even going into attempting to do the extended trot. I mean, good luck with that. Chances are you're going to be beelining across that diagonal like there's no tomorrow, and at X, you're even more on the forehand. Been there. But if you can get suppleness in the body, a lot of those problems are going to sort themselves out. Think of a leg yield up the wall. If you can get the horse to cross his legs, get that inside hind to step better underneath himself, he's going to stretch over his back free up that lumbar, and flow straight into your hands. Has your coach ever asked you to get your horse to cross his hind legs when his head is up in the rafters? You can supple the mouth all day long. That horse ain't coming down. Instead, by getting him to activate the hind legs, he's going to find comfort and want to stretch, which is going to line up the front end, which is going to end up making your suppling in the mouth invisible. Because he's already 99% there already. And that leads us into number two, which is the horse needs to carry his own head. You're going to hear a lot of people say this, and majority of people don't have a clue what it means. Not because they don't understand the goal, but on the pure mentality that they really don't believe they're holding their horse up. This is something that took me an extremely long time to understand, to appreciate, to respect, and to change it. Because I honestly did not believe that I was holding my horse up. Because when we as amateurs think, don't hold the horse up, we must have two-ton Tessie in our hands. Him burying down on that bed, and we feel like our arms are going to fall off. Talk about doing a bicep workout, am I right? <laughs> but a horse that is heavy in the hand can still be essentially light, and that's where the misconception comes into play. Holding means anything that can aid the horse in a constant balance. I like to think that my horse is always trying to find a fifth leg, like a tripod. Sometimes just holding the rein constantly can end up being enough to hold. And when you hold him, the flow stops and he can end up bracing and hardening. So we as riders need to think about asking, balancing and letting it go again. This misconception broadens especially when dealing with amateurs because we are so scared to let go of that feeling because we're scared we're never going to get it back. So we'll just hold it there in hopes that we can keep it together. Chances are you're not keeping it together. You're giving something for the horse to hold on to. So what we have to do is ask for it, get it, let it go, to then ask for it to get it to let it go again. And that's the game of it. And now you're starting to recycle and ride every stride. And this goes perfectly into number three, which is keep that pull up. You're probably not going to hear a lot of this in Hunters, but when you hit level two in dressage, game on. Training level and level one, you can kind of get away with a lower frame, a horse not being completely connected, a horse not really pushing from behind. You get away with it because you're in the early training years. But once you move up, you ain't fooling anyone, honey. See, when you're dealing with young horses, naturally, they're on the forehand. Kind of like this. And over the first couple of years, we're kind of taking from this and we're kind of trying to make them a bit even like that. And as we start into the higher levels, we start to get them to do this, 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 and this. To start from a horse from here and then make them do this, you're going to have problems. They need to build the muscle. And this is where the misconception is. Many amateurs, and not going to lie, many coaches as well, think to bring the pull up literally means to bring the pull up. And we can't expect to just keep bringing the pull up higher and higher, and that's going to get the job done. 
Why? Because that's not what it means. What bring the pull-up means is to engage the hind legs. Load them so the shoulders become free of weight, aka off the forehand. With them there, they can then begin to climb. You know when you see an amazing extended canter and the hind legs are like this far off the ground? I can't even put it in frame. You know when they're really high off the ground? It's not because the rider keeps fussing with the front end trying to bring that pole up every stride going, come on up here, you little bugger. It's because the hind legs are constantly coming under to push everything in front of them up. Honestly, the majority of it has to do with those hind legs. And if you're just bringing the front up with the head, you're going to be in big trouble down the road. Soundness is going to be into the question. Back problems, rearing, all that stuff. You know the saying, you can't fix it with the front end? Yep, that's pretty much it. But what you can think about when you're trying to understand this concept is think about not bringing the pull up. Think about bringing those shoulders up. Because to be able to lift the shoulders off the ground, those hind legs have to be in play. That's what's going to bring those shoulders and the head up. Hey, you liking this video so far? Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It goes a long way. What are we on now? Like four, I think? And this is one of my absolute favorites. The tired horse. This is something that blew my mind when I heard about it because pretty much nobody talks about it. When you hear about horses getting tired, you start to feel them slowing down, huffing and puffing, dragging their feet. But what about those horses that are a little hot and are like the Energizer Bunny? They're not slowing down. They keep going and going and going, and going. But what do you think when I say they've hit their tired mark? All right, you ready for me to blow your mind? Let's say you're riding and your horse struggles at stretching into the contact. Llama under tack, anyone? And he starts to get it, and everything is going great. The next day, he gets it again. Fantastic. Then the next day, he starts off pretty well, and then halfway through, the tension he used to have pops up out of nowhere, and it feels like you've gone back to square one. Feel familiar? The thing that runs through our minds is that we've done something wrong. We didn't supple him well enough. Maybe he lost rhythm. Did he get distracted? So then we start fixing things, patching things up. I'm going to move him sideways to soften him or do some increased decrease riding. Now he's getting more tight. He's doing bigger movements. Where did all this energy come from? It's like he just had a Red Bull. So we keep fixing. Something must have gone wrong. Check my rhythm again. Suppleness, contact. He keeps giving us more energy. What's going on? What do I do now? Stop. Your horse is tired. He's not tired. Did you not just see how much energy he freaking had? Just like a child who gets overtired and can't control themselves, gets hyper, can't get to sleep, that's where this horse fits. He went well for how many days and now his muscles are burning and instead of being like a child that passes out on the floor, he revs himself up on adrenaline to get through the work. So if your horse is going well and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, has tightened, has all this extra energy, is kind of using his body against you, chances are he's not trying to do it because he's saying screw you. Chances are he tired. Bring him down to a walk. Give him a break. Let the oxygen get back into those muscles. Give him some time to recuperate and then go back at it again. I know it seems completely off the wall because it's completely opposite of what you're thinking because he had all this extra energy. But remember, that's adrenaline. And he's using that to cover up his own tiredness. So you have to think outside the box and go, I know you have all this energy. We're going to bring it down to a walk, let you relax. And with that mentality, you're going to actually find that probably in the next couple of rides, if you keep doing this and keep being aware of what your horse is telling you, you're going to have better rides. You're going to be able to shut down those problematic areas and your horse is going to be a lot more relaxed and much happier. Hey, have you hit the subscribe button yet? The button's right down below. You know what to do. And the last misconception I have for the day, number five, is hunched shoulders and straightness. I see this happen all the time. People post pictures online, on Facebook, Twitter, all that fun stuff, asking other people to give their opinion on their position and what they can do to fix it. Usually the person who posts the picture or the video looks something like this. And everybody tells them that they need to bring the shoulders back and that's going to fix everything. Um, yeah, it's not. Let's be completely honest, it's, it's not. But let's say I'm going to put the shoulders back. That's the issue, right? Just put the shoulders back, everything's going to be fixed. Put the shoulders back. As you can see, I'm still behind the vertical. Which leads to poor posture even more. An ability to drive the horses back away, and it's going to hurt us in the process. Your legs are going to shoot forward. Back problems, anyone? How about gashes on the knees? 
Let's try this again. Your shoulders are the only thing here in the right position. Your body is trying to find some balance that it's not getting from the core, the back, or the head. So instead of fixing it that way, bring your upper body forward a bit. Close the hip angle and lift the diaphragm using your core. Now we can see that everything is straight and in alignment. By doing it this way, we are not treating a symptom. We're fixing a problem. By just asking the person to put the shoulders back, you're fixing a symptom. The symptom is made because there's a problem, an underlying problem there. We're leaning too far back and we can't find balance. If you want some more help on getting your shoulders back and how to use the core as well as the diaphragm to do it instead of just forcing them back, I do have a video I link to it up there as well as down below in the description. It's 60 seconds long and from what I've heard it's the best 60 seconds you can have with your pants on. And that's pretty much everything I've got for you guys today, all right? Five misconceptions that we as amateurs take and we kind of hold on a bit too dearly. But now it's on to you. Let me know down below in the comment section what are some misconceptions that you know of that people hold on to a bit too firmly. Let me know down below. And if you like this video, why not give it a like? As I said earlier, it's a little thing, but it goes a really long way. And after that, you should really hit that subscribe button. Why not, right? I mean, honestly, become a member of the Little Cruiser Guild yourself. We have new videos up every single week for your entertainment, but also to make this horse world make a bit more sense. And that's pretty much everything I've got for you guys today. All right, thank you so much for watching. I am Nolan Michael Cruz, and I'll talk to you later. Ciao!